Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. And without further ado, I bring to you the great Canadian Lawrence Gowan of Sticks. How are you doing, Lawrence? Ernest, it's lovely to see you again. I'm doing very, very well. And uh, I absolutely love your background picture today of Sam the Record Man. Um, you obviously you obviously know that Sam the Record Man was like a, a historic figure in Canadian music because he had a chain of stores across the country and he was kind of the number one source for, for finding music, for finding new music. And I, I spent a lot of time in that very store that you're sitting in front of there. That's on Young Street in Toronto. And yes. I remember, I, one day I remember doing an autograph session there when my third solo album came out in 1987. And I was playing that night at Massey Hall, which is just a block away, just a block south of there. And the uh, the funny thing was that, uh, and I just played Massey Hall a few months ago, and I talked about this. After the autograph session, with the lineup went right down, all basically practically down to the waterfront. We got through it just about half an hour before the show, but the guy, the record company people back then, were insisting that I take a limousine from the record store to the venue, which is about a block away, which made no sense whatsoever because the traffic was blocked. There are all these people for getting their records signed and also it's Young Street. And so that's like, yeah. broad. so we, I could have walked there a lot quicker, but instead we took a, about a half hour um, car ride to a <laughs> destination that was about a block away that I could have walked to in about oh, a minute. Wow. Well, they they knew that you would have been stopped and you well, would that's never. Okay. But it was also it's the 1980s where everything was about the uh, was about the. Uh, the facade. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you're getting ready to start. Um, well, we will talk about Foreigner in a second, but you have a, a whole string of shows starting tonight in Connecticut. Yeah. And then. um I know you're going to be hitting uh, Michigan. Um, you're going to hit the, uh, well, the Island Resort and Casino. I'm going to see you there in Harris, Michigan, two nights, yeah. April 5th and 6th. You're yeah. going to be doing the Soaring Eagle. But then you're doing a bunch of shows up in Canada, thank God. Mm -hmm. Because I saw with Foreigner and John Waite, I think you only have one Canadian date. Yes. Well, yes. So in the month of, in order to address that, in the month of May, yeah, uh, we're going to do just uh evening with sticks, like just stick shows in, down east. We're going to play in Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia. We're also going to uh, Summerside, uh, Prince Edward Island. I haven't been there in about nearly 30 years now. And also in Moncton, New Brunswick. And then a string of shows through Quebec, which is one of our strongest uh, places on earth. You know, so we'll be in Montreal and Quebec City and trois Rivières and a, a good number of shows. So I'm beginning to... Pratiquer ma français maintenant parce que sticks <laughs> il aime les sticks beaucoup beaucoup tellement beaucoup au Québec. There you go. Go and Google that. Yeah, I, yeah I, I I know more Spanish than anything. I wish you would have spoke Spanish, but I do know I do I knew I know what you said. Um, you won't be singing in French, though, no, correct? No rock voisine. No, we won't. You know, well, the stick songs are in English, and the the, oh, okay. the the French audience seem to love that. I'll probably throw in a few. Um, there's one uh, hit that I had as a solo artist in Quebec where I covered a French song that I'll probably sing a tiny bit of because it just gets the audience singing along before they lose their minds on uh, Fooling Yourself and Come Sail Away and Renegade and all those others. And um, so, and I understand that you generally will sing a gallon tune, um, Criminal yeah. Mind. Will you be doing that in Harris for uh, for us? Don't think we'll do it in Harris. Um, oh, okay. Criminal Mind. I, well, I don't. I I can never say for sure. I never look at the yeah. set list that we're about to go on stage. So, uh, right. it could even be in the show tonight. We actually rehearsed it yesterday. So who knows? Um, no, I. You know, a Criminal Mind was from my solo days, but it's a song yeah. that that on the first day I joined the band, Tommy wanted to do that song. Tommy Shaw wanted to do that song before we did any stick songs. And then by the time we finished, he said, okay, that's that's a stick song from now on. So we perform it occasionally. It was, you know, it's not widely known in the US because the record was never released here, but it but in um but in Canada it was a it was a uh, well, it was a platinum single on a triple platinum album and it's 
rather yeah. than Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that song. So um yeah. roughly how many songs are you guys gonna be doing on the set list when you're doing this run? And then um do you or do you have this in advance yet from Foreigner? You're you're asking the a tough one there, Ernest, because as I as I you know I look at the the set list like I look at a menu before I oh, go really? on stage. I don't get really I don't really get involved anymore because wow. as James I put it many years ago, he said there's such an embarrassment of riches when it comes to great stick songs to play that I began yeah. to like I began to realize, you know, it's better if I see what the set list is about an hour or two before the show because I, it excites me when I see, oh look. We're going to play Man in the Wilderness tonight. We haven't done that in a, in a couple of months. Or, or, you know, we're going to do, uh, you know, when we're doing Snowblind or one, one of those deeper album cuts that uh, people love. And and I like to kind of polish up just a couple of hours before the show. So I don't, I, I can't really answer that accurately. But just to say that there's never a stick show where you won't hear Grand Illusion, Blue Collar Man. I, I, uh, Too much understand. time on my hands. Too much time in my hands. Uh, Renegade, obviously. Yeah. Come sit away, lady. Those are in every show. They have to be. You know, yeah. they're uh, they're such standard songs. You know, and of course now, Mr. Roboto, who's been dusted off and oiled, and uh, is oh, is, and don't uh, let it end. I love that. Very, no, that's very, interesting. What you brought up was uh, that sometimes you look at a set list, and is it that easy to come back to? Because usually, during, you bands would rehearse a bunch of songs before and you have such a catalog yeah well it's it's like this i've been in the band <laughs> now 25 years i'm in year 26 and we play over 100 shows a year yeah. and we rotate things regularly and uh we really we really do know the songs pretty well at this point and what what will happen is this Ernest, we'll, if we don't run the song on stage that day, we'll definitely run it in the dressing room because we've got a, a whole setup backstage where we can hear ourselves acoustically and have all the instruments there. So we can we can do a dressing room rehearsal and, and go out on stage and, and play something, uh, you know, that's uh, that we haven't played in months, sometimes even years. So um, right. it, it's a pretty strong band that way. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. The musicianship. Uh, okay, I'll just keep you a few more minutes here because I know it's presser day. Um, now, Crash of the Crown was the last studio album. Yeah. Um, seems like there's a re-release on the 17th or something. I'm reading anyways. Yeah, so we've, we've done a record where uh, 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 a recording where we've got stick songs and foreigner songs, I think, on the same album. I hope it's going to be on vinyl, actually, but pretty sure it will be um and just because we're doing this tour this blockbuster tour in the summer and my god the, the ticket sales have been the highest for any tour we've ever any summer tour we've ever done and the highest we ever had before was last summer so yeah. it's, it's there's a great anticipation and it's a great combination when you put foreigner and all those hit songs and yeah. stick together on stage together and we have john wait on yeah. on the as well as a special guest so it's going to be, it's over four hours of hit music all night long. And people, people like wow. to have, yeah, people like to have some sort of uh, memento of, uh, you know, of that particular tour, just like a t-shirt. So we decided to make an album where we have great foreigner and stick songs together. I think what you're referring to with Crash of the Crown is it's a, it's another repressing because we've okay. keep, selling, keep selling out of the vinyl and, and it, keep, it keeps going into, into uh, a repressing. So they're probably doing that in anticipation of a uh, strong reaction to it on the tour. I hope they are anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Last, uh, last question. Um, are you guys doing any writing? I, I, it's probably, we always write Ernie, but. Yeah. Um... You know, we're always writing. You're correct. Just at the end of the last run that we did at the end of uh, February, Tommy, uh, Tommy, myself and Will, we went to a studio at, in San Francisco, just outside San Francisco and spent, a good uh, a good five day extended weekend there coming up with some some new songs and looking at some of the ones that we have already so we we've got plenty to make a, another record what we all we need more of is time to uh to actually record the album and and get it out there so we're constantly on especially since the mission the success of the mission that came out in 2017 yeah, that was great of course crash of the crown getting to number one on the billboard rock album chart 
we really have a great incentive now to um it's it, and universal have been great at supporting the 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 records and so we it seems like that that dark period between roughly between well, of the new millennium when the record industry was in quite a bit of disarray it seems to have really settled now and uh people do want to hear you know strong music from classic bands again and so we're trying to live up to that expectation so an album is forthcoming but we don't know when how is that correct all is forthcoming but we don't know when right on okay so um opposite of unsubscribe yeah would be subscribe hey everybody do as uh lawrence gowan of uh stick says it subscribe to the channel for these great interviews um and we'll see you in harris michigan and thanks so much for your gracious time my friend always a, a joy to speak with you Ernest. and yeah very much looking forward to seeing you in harris and uh yeah if you're looking for anything in the import section and sam the record man it's just to your left at the back of the store you'll probably find some yeah stuff. it's kind of it's kind of nippy out here it's uh well it's in uh, march in canada so it's a little chilly but uh yeah i put that up especially because i knew you'd recognize it so i love it i love it that's that was in fact you know i'll tell you something else it's, that was on young street just north of there just north of there was a club called the gasworks right you know, most of the bands that you've ever heard of that ever came out of canada played at the gasworks and uh one of them of course would be rush uh and uh that's so so just you could go and see rush in a club just north of where sam the record man is if you happen to be alive and clever enough to go there back in around 1971 or two around that, that era i remember rock and roll heaven yeah that was just a little further north on young street yeah, yeah. and actually right across almost immediately across from sam the record man just a little bit away was a place called the piccadilly tube which is um fashioned on the uh on piccadilly circus uh subway station in london england it looked like you were going down to the subway and then you'd see stage and band those clubs were spectacular places to uh to to kind of learn how to play in front of live audiences you know and kind of get your your feet wet before you're hitting the stadium smolson center you get your feet wet and sometimes you get your whole body wet if somebody threw a beer bottle so there you go <laughs> exactly all right, buddy. Thanks a lot for your time, and uh, we'll see you soon. You too. Great to talk to you. Thanks.